Hello Visual Effects people, I'm AK and this is the second video on driving Niagara with Fluid Simulation. We have a short introductory video and the full documentation linked in the video description. And in this video I'm going to show you what uh, is the content on the three Niagara demo levels that we have. Level 1 is the main introductory level to Niagara systems. It contains four groups of Niagara systems and various tutorial materials. Um, the first group is uh, introducing you to the data pipelines, namely velocity, density and the real-time generated uh, remarching sheeting pipeline and the possible outcomes when we are using these pipelines. Uh, usually when you press play uh, you are uh, in an interactive real-time mode. In this case for example you could set the light direction and examine how uh, ray marching is influencing this, uh, this system. And uh, besides introducing the data pipelines we are having a look at emitter types these three basic emitter types one that is generating uh, the particle source based on a primitive volume be it a cylinder or a box and the second one is like uh, emitting particles on a static mesh surface and the third one is uh, using skeletal mesh reproduction sprites. You could read more about this uh, in the documentation. But anyway, after this basic introduction, uh, we should have a look at these uh, examples. Let's start with this vortex. Um, this one is about uh, using uh, the baked velocity and density data different ways. Uh, this scene, for example, is demonstrating how uh, velocity could be used uh, by overwriting intrinsic particle velocity. And so the result is like uh, particles moving on a fixed trajectory. And in this case, we are using velocity in an additive manner by um, adding it to particle acceleration. In this case, particles collide with dynamic and static uh, scene meshes. So despite the fact that we are using baked data, uh, the whole system is still responsive. And uh, these three examples are uh, showcasing how we could use uh, the fluid simulation data on a stylized way, so l less realistic. Uh, have a look at this, for example. Uh, it's just uh, basically vertically scaling the mesh particles with the density data. It's really far from being realistic. It's like more like a, a, a visualization of some melting landscape. But anyway, we are using the same vortex uh, fluid sim input to achieve this. And having a look at this one, yeah. It's uh, using combining velocity and density data, but no real-time ray marching. But still, uh, it looks quite fluffy. And if we keep uh, continue this and add a ray march shading path, we could get uh, a kind of realism. Uh, I'm getting below the system and uh, moving the sun a little bit. Uh, yep. So let's see what we have. Ah, uh, yeah. So I'm moving around this cloudscape thing and changing the sand direction and this real-time ray marching does its thing. Yep, the same applies to this system here. So far so good. Um, let's have a look at that system over there. I'm teleporting. So what do we have here? Ah yeah, it's an interesting example of combining uh, the fluid simulation output, which you could see here applied on velocity, with a traditional uh, painted texture, which is like a magic circle with runes. So I'm using that magic circle as a density input, and the velocity 
to wash away the density mass particles and so here we go um, you could do that with any classical density texture so you could combine a fluid simulation with uh, with classical data right on uh, we have a few more of these ray marge systems this one is like a fluffy little cloud thing nothing special about it and let's have a look at this group you might have seen it in uh, the quick introductory course it is demonstrating how this lubed smoke column is behaving when uh, we are using it in a stylized way and we have been moving this object and examining how particles collide uh, wrapping around a static mesh surface and of course these guys but you have seen it in this short video please have a look at that um, so much about um, the first level so is that's four groups demonstrating the data pipelines you could click on these and have a look at uh, the details in the word outliner uh, and find the Niagara systems that we are using and um, yep here's the smoke thing in Niagara particle editor and you could see how we are using um, a basic root emitter a base emitter to define all these example systems but anyway uh, you're gonna have a look at these on your own and now please um, let me move on to the second level and uh, this second level is um, demonstrating how a single point light source could be used for ray marching with the interactive sliders I'm moving this light source and the same way as I'm calculating direction from a single sunlight uh, we could do the same thing with a point light and I'm moving around the system to have a look how it looks like from different angles yeah I'm getting a bit lower I'm moving uh, the light source vertically uh, it is now below the smoke columns yeah so uh, this is on the on the second level and the third level is really experimental I was trying to came up with uh, a large cloudscape by um, using a tiled loop uh, kind of bait fluid sim data and um, the whole system is uh, behaving like a plane of clouds and it's also colliding with the big sphere in the middle just have a look at it so shortly uh, that's the thing we have these uh, three example levels and I really advise you to start with level one and have a look at the documentation and shortly that's it uh, in the next video the third one I'm going to get into the details of how uh, supporting blueprints works how we calculate ray marching light direction how Niagara systems are using uh, these uh, base emitters and texture sampling modules but that is for the next video so thank you for your patience and see you next time